is free forever across all devices, unlimited passwords as an individual user. Uh, and of course they are. They have to. Yeah. Uh, include pass keys and includes hardware keys like Yubikey. Find out more at bitwarden.com slash twits. Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Well, I'm just listening to the radio that's now been reconfigured um, to transmit. Now I've got the microphone amplifier and just listening to a podcast that's uh, feeding into the microphone. You, just, you use it to go to sleep? What? I don't know. <laughs> Bitwarden.com. And if you don't recognize it, that's um, this uh, security now on the, uh, the Twit Network. I haven't mentioned it's been right for no. quite a while since I haven't had anything new to share. And of course, uh, the crystal filter is um, only 2.4K wide, so 300 hertz to 2.4K roughly. And it, to be fair, the 2.4 is actually 60 dB down, so it's quite a constrained, um, quite a constrained bandwidth. But it seems to be pretty good. I don't seem to be too much. I have to uh, really check the bandwidth, but um, I don't think I'm exceeding anything there. So let me just pause here, and I'll go back to the uh, radio itself, and we'll talk about what's changed. Right, so um, it's been a few little changes to the board, nothing too significant. Um, before I forget though, quite happy too with the um, carrier suppression. So that's, if I key the microphone now, so that's keyed. Hello, testing, one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, and then unkey it. That's good, so I don't have uh, any carrier bleeding through, which is nice. So I'm pretty happy um, where the BFO is sitting. Which is good. Right, anyway, I digress. So, in terms of changes since the last video was put up, um, nothing too much really. Have mounted down here, Just for, this is just obviously for the mock-up before trying to squeeze it all into the case, a, um, a microphone um, socket there. We've got the PTT coming off, that's going directly through to the Arduino. Um, what I have, okay, I'll talk to that in a sec actually, so let's just pause there. Um, transmit audio from the microphone uh, going through an RC um, second order low pass filter into our microphone amplifier uh, and I'll talk to both of those in a sec. Out of, the, out of that of the um, amplifier and into um, this mixer here which is acting as our balanced modulator. It then runs through the IF strip as we discussed the other day uh, comes out to the second mixer where it's been mixed with our carrier oscillator frequency uh, which is then stepping up our IF which has now had that unwanted sideband stripped off because as you recall that balanced modulator is going to produce double sideband so we need to strip off within the IF the unwanted um, the unwanted sideband so that now is uh, being stepped up over here through our carrier oscillator uh, up to our desired transmit frequency which is then coming out uh, into the bandpass filter just to make sure she's nice and clean before disappearing off down to the currently non-existent uh, power amplifier. So all I was doing there was just dumping that RF across a small 50 ohm resistor there and that's what we were picking up on the radio. So I'll need to work out how much power is being dropped across here and then work out if I am going to try and aim for yeah, something in the region of 5 watts which would be nice. Uh, we'll see how far we get given the available space that I have in that case. Um, how much gain we're going to need and then divide that over I'll just turn that radio down. Uh, divide that over um, several stages of amplification so we don't get any uh, instabilities. Anyway, so that's all that's really changed there. Um, I will talk to the um, the RC low pass filter here and the amplifier in a sec. Um, what I there was different ways of switching between transmit and receive. What I've elected to do is to uh, have the PTT, which is which is grounded on transmit. Uh, being sensed by the Arduino because and then the Arduino is then outputting two discretes so two five level two five volt level discretes coming out to these two white wires here which are going to if I was just to zoom up uh, two transistors two uh, again two n three nine oh fours they have sufficient current uh, with one uh, k ohm in the base just to make sure at five volts that they've been well and truly um, turned on and one of them this one here is switching our main relay so that's turning our main relay on 
and then the second one is actually doing double duty it is switching on uh, both our two what I've called the um, IF relays which basically switch um, how the two filters uh, receive and then pass on their their signals I did it that way because I have this red switch here that will be on the uh, on the main radio will be the tune so when that tunes you'll hear you'll hear the relays click in there that's also through that same mechanism keying up the transmitter but I'll also output through one of um, the unused pins there a, uh, a square wave which I'll also clean up using a, an RC low pass filter to turn that more into a sine wave if I can uh, and then I'll feed that uh, at that, a very low level into the input of the microphone amplifier a um, bit of a cheats way of producing a, a single tone but certainly enough to to tune up the transmitter to um, to get our, uh, our our antenna tuned up. I might have to put a little bit more thought into that. Uh, I might uh, have that level quite low, so rather than outputting a full five watts or whatever the full power is going to be uh, into an unmatched system, uh, I might have that at a uh, at a lower level. So um, I'll just have to put a little bit of thought into that one. But but that's going to be the the sequence anyway. Out of here be a square wave. I'll clean it up and then feed into the radio to output a um, to output a, a sine wave or a carrier wave. More the point. So that's that's the decision I made there, and I'll stick with it for now anyway. Um, and I think I think 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 that's all there was. So let me just zoom out a bit and maybe go a little bit higher, and I will talk to um, the circuit. So. Uh, two things got made up, like I say, the microphone amplifier and the uh, RC low pass filter. Before I forget, I'm just going to, gosh, the professionalism of this video is incredible. 10904. I'm just going to annotate, indeed, because I keep thinking to do it. It's a 2N3904. And, you know, many people say, why do you keep using that one? Because it's cheap, it's cheerful, it's easy to get hold of, and as I've said many, 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 many times, the whole idea of these videos um, is not to tell you how to do it, but to encourage others to give it a go. Um, in my eyes, it's, it's not too hard to do. Um, it's pretty straightforward, and um, if I can do it, then really anybody can. So that's really the whole impetus of these videos, is to encourage others to give it a go. So that's why I sort of stick to these um, cheap and cheerful and easy to get hold of devices and configurations more the point as well. Anyway, so, microphone amplifier. Um, wanting to pass um, 300 hertz to, let's say, 3K plus. Um, noting that this radio will only ever pass at the highest frequency uh, of modulation, uh, 2.4 kilohertz, because that's the cutoff of this filter there. So I would have preferred a slightly wider range. I, I, I prefer that sound, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so for this particular device here, beta DC, as we've seen many times, is uh, we'll use 173. Uh, even though I'm going to run this at 5 milliamps, that 173, which is the geometric mean between 100 and 300, uh, is more was the value that's quoted more at 10 milliamps. It's close enough. Um, a lot of these, as you've seen many times, um, in the ballpark is good enough, especially when you start coming up with exact values and then taking the nearest standard value. So in this particular case, I'm just going to use a beta DC of 173. ICQ, so the quiescent current through the device, as I've just mentioned, is going to be 5 milliamps. And as I've said a few times now, I'm going to um, set the emitter to be 1 volt. So based on that, we can start to work out what our DC uh, biasing resistor is going to be, so R1, R2 and RE. So RE, 1 volt there, and 0 volts there because it's ground. Ohm's law, 1 volt divided by 5 milliamps is 200 ohms. R2 and R1, same, same as we've seen many times, the voltage at this point is 0.7 volts greater than this point here, so the emitter to the base, so 1 plus 0.7 equals 1.7, so 1.7 volts divided by the current flowing through here will give us R2, and as we've said a few times now, we want to have at least 10 times the base current flowing through that circuit. So there'll be 10 times through here, plus another one going through this one, which is R1, which will give us 11 times. So do the maths. 
1 plus 0.7 divided by 10 times the base current, or in other words, our emitter current divided by 173, comes out at 5.8 K, and I'll use 5.6 K, here is standard value. Um, I've got a little bit tricky here, really and honestly. Um, to work out the voltage across uh, R1, it's the voltage here um, minus the voltage here, which is 1.7. There's 12 volts coming in, which again, so they on me, haven't uh, depicted here. And there's obviously some small voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistor. There'll be the quiescent current flowing through the device of 5 milliamps, plus our 11 times base current flowing through here. Um, I've ignored the base current op uh, portion because it's, it's tiny, and I have taken into consideration our quiescent current, but you know, five milliamps, ten ohms, not a lot. So, uh, yeah, I really should have just ignored that, but I've concluded anyway. So, 12 volts minus that very small voltage drop, minus 1.7, which is the voltage at the base, um, divided by uh, 11 times that base current comes out at 32.2, or I'll just use 33 uh, k ohms. Now, in terms of uh, where I want to situate the quiescent collector voltage, I want that to be roughly halfway between ground and VCC in order to give me the greatest amount of voltage swing for an input. Um, but I do note that the emitter is already sitting a volt up, so I'm going to set this, rather than uh, 12 divided by 2 equals 6, I'll add another 1 volt to that and make it 7, so rough as guts, we'll make that um, 7 volts. So if we're going to say that then, um, we need to work out what the voltage is across this device. So up here we're going to have that again, uh, 12 volts minus that very small voltage across here because our voltage here. I've just said I'm going to make that 7 volts, and that's what we see down here. So 12 volts minus that small voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor, minus 7 volts divided by 5 milliamps, comes out at 990 ohms. I'm going to use 1k ohm. So we've got 1k ohm there, that'll set that at roughly um, 7 volts. Uh, and that's pretty well done for the resistors. For the capacitors, uh, apart from our decoupling capacitors up here, and that one there I haven't written down, so let me just do another professional pause here, 100 microfarads, and I'll add in the 12 volts. So uh, this one here, 100 nanofarads, 100 microfarads for our decoupling. So, we've got our two coupling capacitors bringing our audio in and our audio out. I'm just going to set those uh, at 10 uh, microfarads, um, which would be oodles for, for this particular purposes here. Now for CE, uh, the, the, the uh, collector bypass capacitor, so we're decoupling fully the emitter with this capacitor here, um, that then will make sure I'm running this at, at full noise. So the transfer function for gain is going to be minus, because it's an inverting amplifier. This goes up, that goes down, so minus. So minus RC over little RE. It would have been little RE plus RE, but because it's fully bypassed, that gets cancelled out. So it's just little RE, which as you recall is 26 divided by our emitter current uh, in milliamps. So it's going to be uh, pretty well full noise. Um, Right, but because my, t my signal coming in so small off that electric, that dynamic microphone, it's, it's, I'm not going to drive this in the saturation. Anyway, so this capacitor here, uh, rule of thumb needs to be no greater than a tenth of RE. We said RE is 200 ohms, so a tenth of that is going to be 20 ohms. So let's just have a look at that. So XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC. Let's rearrange the formula to make our capacitance the subject. And we'll insert 20 ohms and 300 hertz. So we want that to be no greater than a tenth of our RE at the lowest operating frequency, which would be 300 hertz for this audio amplifier passing voice. So let's work that out. It comes out at 26 microfarads. I'm going to be a bit silly, and I'm going to use 100 microfarads. It's a value which I've used before, and it works well to really make sure that you pass those those low frequencies um, through the amplifier. So, as I've said here, heaps. Now, enough said on the that amplifier. Coming on the input, and I, I did it separately as opposed to actually on the board itself, um, is the second order low pass or RC low pass filter. 
the configurations here, R1C1 going straight into R2C2. Now, the, uh, the function for the minus 3 dB point is approximately, it's not exactly, uh, 1 over 2 pi root R1C1 R2C2. Now, in order to stop the second stage here from loading up and, and causing issues with the overall configuration, there's a couple of rules of thumb. So you make R2 uh, 10 times R1. And then to keep the relationship uh, correct, you then need to make C2 a tenth of C1. So I'm going to stick with that, and I'm going to arbitrarily give R1 a value of 100 ohms. Um, I want to try and minimise the drop across um, this whole low pass filter, so I'm going to just go with 100 ohms. So if that's going to be 100 ohms, then R2 is going to be 1000 ohms. And then what I've done then is I've used an online second order um, calculator just for convenience to then just throw into it values which would have come up with this. If I'd rearranged this and just keep plugging in different values for R1, C1 and R2 then I would have come out with the same answer. So using that calculator because it was convenient, I um, finalised things with the C1 of 0.47 microfarads. Therefore C2 is a tenth of that, 0 0.047 microfarads, which gives me 3.39 kilohertz. So my minus 3 dB point is at, like I say, roughly 3.39 kilohertz, which is, which is, I think that's fine, uh, given that I'm not going to go beyond 2.4 anyway because of the crystal filter. So I'm quite happy to live with that, uh, which is what I did. I um, threw the SIG gen on the input, swept through from 300 to 10K, and certainly once you start getting into that sort of um, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, the output really starts to drop off as we're starting to dive down um, the, uh, the right hand skirt of that low pass filter. So there you go. I think I've rambled on enough here. I think I've rambled on enough. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? That's about all really. So I think I've mentioned already but I'll say it again. Now it's just a matter of thinking about um, how the power amplifier may work. So how I'm going to amplify that uh, quite small signal up to a, um, a usable level that can be fed out the antenna. And as I've realised, I am running out of space. Um, that's because I don't use service mounted devices at this stage, I'm still using through hole. And as a consequence, the way that I build things, um, it just means they're physically reasonably large. But we'll see how we go, we'll see how we go. Uh, either way, it's still enjoyable um, making up the radio. Uh, and that's about all. So I'm going to say 73 here, and I'm going to probably, I think I might actually play around with the uh, the tune function, uh, write the code for that, and then do another uh, low pass filter, and then to see how that looks like coming out. Because uh, I'll need to do that at some stage, and um, I think I might do that now, as I sort of quietly think about um, the power amplifier. Certain things going through the mind, you know, do I go for? It, it has to be. It has to be a. Um, a linear amplifier for the SSB, so I can't go for Class C or anything like that, which would have been suitable for, say, a CW rig, and then clean it up in the final tank circuit. Um, so, you know, sort of Class A, A, B. Um, if I had enough drive, I could get up into, say, an IRF 510, but the problem with an IRF 510 is the quiescent current through that um, is quite high. So from a battery drain point of view, it's not the best, but um, yeah, so not quite. Just going to put a bit of thought into that one. I, my initial thoughts when I was thinking about this radio was to to use uh, a CB radio um, transistor or a transistor that I've got out of some of the old Tate VHF radios, you know, which is basically this sort of came from. Um, scavenge one of those transistors and have a bit of a play with that, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm not hard and fast on 5 watts, not at all. Um, if I can get somewhere around there, that's great. If I don't, eh, yeah, so be it. Um, it's not the end of the world for as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, 73, catch you later.